Good morning, everybody. Um, we're going to change it up a little bit from tolling you today. Um, as I realize a few of you have still not got to meet me yet, so I'm Mr. Seaton. Um, I come from a structural and back or structural and sheet metal background. I have a structural license um, and a high pressure vessel license and pipe welding. Usually, uh, my strong suit is stick welding, but um, TIG, MIG, and stick I'm pretty comfortable. So that being said, we will get started on. Um, some welding samples. Uh, I know some of you have done the tooling you assignments on welding symbols. Uh, I think the blueprint reading class, I know we went over a couple different things and some of the upperclassmen, they should have went over it in the past, but this will still be a good refresher for everybody regardless. So, we talk about welding symbols. There are two elements that are always necessary for that symbol. It kind of looks like that marker is a little bit dull, so we might switch to a different one. Hopefully you guys can see that. So, two elements are always necessary, and that is our reference line and our arrow. Our arrow is always going to be a determining factor along with which side of our reference line. So, this is always our arrow side. And this is always, always, always our other side. And if you guys would, uh, go ahead and take notes on this because I'll have a worksheet or two going over this, but also have some reference sheets to go back over this to help because I know this is going to be backwards as far as words. So, we've got our arrow side is always on the bottom, other side is always on the top. Occasionally, but not required, there will be what's called a tail. And this could be something as simple as a position that the weld will be done in at 3G, or the process that will be used there, like shielded metal arc welding, or stick welding as we call it usually. Okay, so on one of the sheets that I've uploaded for you guys, we're going to talk a little bit about weld symbols. So this is our welding symbol, and weld symbols get added to this, to basically similar to hieroglyphics from the Egyptians to tell a story just using pictures. And it's always used on blueprints. So this would be a fillet weld. And we have a T joint that we would be welding. And we were told to put a fillet weld in. When we got done, it would be like this. So if you would take this little weld nugget out as kind of a triangle, it looks a lot like a fillet weld. Okay? So, with our fillet welds, we can have it on our arrow side, or we can have it on our other side, or sometimes it's on both, okay? And this arrow side and other side comes into play. We move our T-joint down to our weld symbol. And if we have this, for example, our arrow is pointing to this side that we're going off of, it's always the closest joint to the arrow. We're going off of that, and we have fillet weld symbol only on our top side. That means our weld will go to the other side. Because remember, the top side of our reference line is always the other side, the opposite side of where the arrow is pointing. We had our fillet weld symbol on our arrow side, it would just simply go right here where the arrow was pointing. Like so. But like I said, you can have a scenario where a weld would go on both sides. And it would 
would just look like this. So there's no guesswork as far as which side it goes on. So there's a, a rule of thumb with welding where the thinnest material that you're welding between a thinner and a thicker one, you always make a weld size, the, the size of the smaller weld, okay? So let's say we've got our T-joints still, and let's say our vertical part of our T-joint, this is not drawn to scale, but let's just say this is one inch, and our bottom plate here is a half inch. So generally speaking, unless an engineer or a CWI or something calls out for something special, you're always going to go to the smaller thickness of material. So let's keep this welding symbol up here, fill weld on both sides, arrow side and the other side. And we'll go ahead and make our fillet weld in, and we're going to make it a half inch. So we would go through, weld both sides of this T-joint, nice and pretty, okay? So, say that the engineer or CWI did call out for a specific weld, and they had a half inch, so that half inch would go just to the left, which I know is your guys right as you're watching this, but it would go just to the left of our fill and weld center. So, the way we would measure that on our weld, we make this bigger. So if this is our weld right here, and we've filled all this in and it's welded up real pretty, we would measure from what's called the root, which would be the inside part of our weld, going to the outside toe, this bottom part here, and then we would measure from the root up to the top part of the toe, and this would need to be a half inch. There's a very common misconception that you would measure what's called the face of the weld, the part that we see, and that's incorrect. We always measure what's called the legs coming out from the root and coming up from the root. Okay? So it's specified we made a half inch weld, did it both sides of our teeth on here. Okay? So let's move on to something a little bit different. So let's say we have a black joint, and for those that haven't got the weld one up or seen one in the shop here yet this year, that would just be two pieces of metal overlapping each other at any rate. It could be only overlapped just a tiny little bit, or it could overlap feet work. just depends. So we've got a black joint here, and we still have a half inch fillet weld to be made. So, our arrow is pointing at this joint right here, but since it's on the top, we would need that weld to go in over here, which would be our other side. Okay? So hopefully that's making sense, um, but we'll, we'll continue on with this a little bit. So, if we have, oh, let's say we have an edge joint. That's just where two pieces of metal are butted up side to side just like this. And we're going to make a, an edge weld be at the top or the bottom. So if we have our fillet weld, we'll move it to the bottom and we'll make a 3 8 fillet weld this time. Since we're on the bottom now, we just look for wherever that arrow is pointing. And that's where we added our weld. So it would go right there. But again, if our fillet weld was up here on our other side, then it would be the other side of that, where the arrow is pointing, and we would add a weld right down over here. Okay? Alrighty. 
So we want to remember that. So let's say we have something real fancy here. And we've got one piece of metal, and then we've got on both sides a piece of metal. We'll move our reference line to make this a little easier. So let's say we have our arrow right there. And we're going to do some gas tungsten arc welding. Commonly known as TIG welding. And we're going to put a one inch fillet welding. And we have our arrow pointing right here. Okay? So, as I said, we have one piece of metal running vertically and then two separate ones on the side. When this happens, we would never cross our main piece of metal because, as I said, this is our other side that we're working with, so it's not going to go where the arrow is pointing, but the other side. So, you could raise the point, well, there's three other sides where you could go this other side, you could go this other side, you could go this other side. The rule that comes into play here is you would never cross a main support or a main piece. You would always just go the other side of your supplementary piece that you'd be adding in. Okay? So if we have this, we have our arrow pointing here to this joint, and, and even though it's not skinny, this would still be a T joint, but we have our fillet weld at one inch on the other side, so we would come to the opposite side of this supplementary piece and add our weld in right here. And then same thing if we had another weld assembled here, hopefully that's yeah, still on the screen. Um, if we had a one inch fillet weld here, it would be the same thing. Stay on the same side as this main piece of steel here. Not crossing over to this side, and instead it would just cross over these smaller supplementary pieces. Okay? Okay, so while we're on the fillet wells, we'll go into some length and pitch. So, as we have our weld symbol, we're sticking with our fillet welds. Not all the time do you weld it saw. Sometimes you do what's called <coughs> intermittent chain welds. So, as if we have a T joint we're looking down on, we're in the overhead view. This would be our vertical piece, and this is just our flat plate. Like this, just in the overhead view. And we'll make a, oh, I don't know, we'll do a quarter inch fillet weld. <coughs> so like I say, a lot of times, you will just weld solid, both sides, one side, one or the other, <coughs> depending on what you're doing depending on what the engineer calls for and specs and all that kind of stuff. But every now and then, <coughs> on these intermittent chain welds, you will have a weld here, and a weld here, and a weld here, and the space in between will be left untouched. So very commonly in the industry, these are called stitch welds. Just like sewing, it's just a little stitch to go in intermittently or every now and again. So you can have that on one side, you can have that on another, have it on both, whichever. Like I said, just depends on the engineer what they call for. Um, but this would be demarcated on our welding sample and it would tell you that. So we refer to this as length. and pitch. And our length always refers to the size of the weld. So, and, and that makes sense. So, let's say we have 
two inch welds. All the way around. So we would have two right here. And it's always high for So we've got two inch long welds, and our pitch refers to the center of each weld to each other. So if we have the center right here, which would be one inch in since we've got a two inch weld, to the center of our next weld, we'll make that six inches. <coughs> So the same thing then from this object line to the center of our next weld would be six inches. Okay? So it would look like this. It's getting a little small, but there's a two hyphen six right here. So a very big misconception is that it would be from our pitch would be from the end of a weld to the beginning of the next one, which is not accurate. It would be from the center of the weld to the center of the weld. Okay? And that could be something as simple as this is kind of display where you start on the far left and you end on the far right and you have one in the middle. It doesn't always work like that. Sometimes it's stepped in or sometimes you wait four inches or step in four inches and then start it, it that would be demarcated in the tape. All that extra information. So with chain welds, you could also have alternating intermittent chain welds. And that would just look like them being offset from each other, so it wouldn't be one on the other side of each other, but instead have a weld here, weld here, weld there, and because it's alternating, there would be a weld in between, so it would be stepping like this. So how would it look on a weld set? Well, we would instead of having our fillet weld symbols right above each other, we would have them offset. Let me actually move that computer closer. It'll be a whole lot easier to see. Okay, still backwards, but easier to see. So they would be offset by about half like this, okay? So that would just tell us we're going to alternate where our fillet welds go. And again, there would be some kind of information if it was specific to which side it needed to be. Usually on the T-joint, it wouldn't matter because you could just take it and spin it, and either way, then you'd be good. So you would have your symbol offset. You would have your measurement for the leg of the weld. And same thing, you would still run center of weld to center of weld for the pitch, which is six inches here, and your two inches, which would be the size of the weld. Okay, I think that'll be a decent stopping point for right now. Um, there is a, a worksheet I've attached with this that'll help. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me. I'm, even though we're in NTI, I'm here every day, so um, let me know if there's any questions, issues, problems, anything like that. And beyond that, I will see you next time, and keep up on the tooling you. Thank you.